So nowadays, so okay, I'm going to talk about an uh, Android network socket in Android. Since the last version of Marshmallow, the internet permission ch uh, protection level changed to dangerous to normal uh, level. So we'll see uh, in what that imply and what's happening in your um, OS system when you uh, request to create a, so a socket. So first of all, I'm Alize. I'm working at Genie Mobile as a Linux and Android system developer. I worked on two different products. The first one is a well-known Android emulator, Genie Motion. And I also worked on a Genie Master uh, product, which is an Android internal ROM uh, dedicated to uh, professional and is, um, most especially to industrial uh, companies. So first of all, as we, co we, we, are have to, we are going to talk about the internet permission in Marshmallow, then we're going to see what happens in the system when you're asking for a socket. At the end, we're going to talk about the security aspect of this mechanism. So let's see. So when you're creating uh, an application, when you want to have an internet uh, permission, you have to declare the, the use of this permission in your Android manifest. So this is what happening uh, just here. So this is exam an example from an application I get where you can have the source code here on GitHub. So let's see the, the definition of this permission in the room. You have a def dedicated Android manifest file where the permission is defined. And what is important here is to see the normal protection level here. So what does it mean? When you have a, a, protect, a normal protection level, that means your permission is granted at the install time, and automatically. And when you're going on the Play Store for installing uh, this, for example, this application, which is a um, SSH client and Telnet client, uh, when you click on the install button, you don't have any pop-up uh, showing you that what are the permission requested, unless the dangerous permission. If you want to see the full details of permission needed by the application, you have to click here. I'm sorry for people who are not able to see here. You have a very small button here where it's written permission details. And when you click on it, you have this small pop-up coming, coming up. And here you see full network access. And here you're able to see that yeah, your application is going to use the internet permission. So as far as the normal prediction level permission are granted at the install time, the dangers as in runtime, and once you install your application, it's OK. So let's see a bit more. On what uh, is found the Android permission system, it's found on check the UID and GID of the different uh, application process running on your device. So when you are for the permission, internet permission, you will see it's rely on the GID in it. If you going, you can find this this on your on your device in the platform XML file. So if you're going in the source code row and the ROM source code, you will find in here in this file all the user ID and GID needed by the system, and they are static, so you're not able to change it. And what is inter interesting here is that the um, ID in it, so the GID over here, have this value for the GID. When I installed the application, my um, SSH application uh, on my system, I can see in this in the data system package list file that yes, it has its own user ID and GID, and a secondary group here on the end. So what is really happening at the install time? At the beginning, you you're booting your device. All the information concerning the GID from of your platform of your of your phone is uh, stored here on this platform XML. Now you want to install an application requesting the internet permission. So you go into the Google Play uh, on the Google Store or even on the IDB and say, I want to start an app. Then he download your app. is going to, to parse the Android XML file, looking at your internet permission, and say, OK, I'm in the install time. It's normal, so grant it. When you're going to launch your application, when you click on the icon, this Activity Manager service said, hey, I want to know what the GID and the UID of this uh, future process. And we'll give it all this information to Zigot. And Zigot is a very part particular uh, process in your system because the Zigot have the, um, have the uh, 
Arch uh, VM preloaded with its libraries and uh, is going to fork, create a new process from, uh, from, the, uh, from Zygot, um, change the user ID and GID of your, f of your process, which is going to be your application, and then load your application and then launch your activity. So that's how uh, application get their own UID and GID in, um, in Android. But really, that's all. I mean, I'm going to create, in my application, I'm going to create a socket create a, a, and connect on it and to a server outside as nothing is done at the runtime. Seriously? I'm, I mean, it's quite, I mean, danger is there. So I said, there's something happening at the runtime, I'm pretty sure of it, so let's dig in Android to find out. So let's talk about the network socket in Android. I'm very sorry because I thought it was have a better uh, rendering uh, up there. So here on the side is typically what you want, you want to do on Linux. When you create a TCP and client server, you will, try, you will do, you create a socket, and then you connect, and, you, and then you can read and write and dialogues with your, um, with your TCP server. In Android, to do the same TCP client or something look li which looks like, the only thing you need to do, because a very interesting part here, is to create a thread, and in this thread, you just hear, I'm sorry for people not uh, able to see, here is write socket, again, new socket, given the IP, the IP uh, address and the port. And that's all. I mean, I have no connect, I have no socket, and this here, the part of the code here, is to write over the stream. And that's all. So it seems that the socket API is doing all the job for me. And any application can call this API, even framework is doing it. And where is this, uh, this class? Is it packed in the Java core, li uh, core library uh, called corelibart.jar? And you can find the source code here in your OSP uh, source tree. So I went to see that library and I said, okay, I really want to find my, uh, my syscall. Where is my socket? So, seriously, where is the creation of it? So I dig in, in um, Java, Android Java core library. I won't want to go into the details, but what is interesting, remember that in uh, my, my small example application, I just had a constructor that is making the job for me for, all, for, the, so for the creation of the socket and for the connects. It had a private, um, a private um, function uh, in this API, which is going to call another, another class, another class, another class, and finally, I arrive another package of the core library called um, libcore iopposix. And here I have very, something very interesting here, is a native uh, function, which means cool, because as far as I know, I want to access to my text call, so I need to fall back to C language, and the way to, to uh, Java called with C is to, call with, is to uh, use GNE, uh, GNE interface. So, thanks God, we're going to do GNE port of the Java core library, and here you have the implementation uh, of the, at the end, the socket, which is going to call Bionic. Bionic is a C library of Android, and it's going to call for me the, um, uh, the syscall socket. Fine. But there is no, during all this process, I never, I never have been checked if I was allowed or not to create a socket. And I was like, uh, <laughs> really? So, OK, it's not in the Java library. Maybe it's going to be in Bionic. And truth is, what is happening in Bionic is a bit weird. When I arrive in Bionic, here was it I discover this small function socket, what was called by my GNE, and suddenly I have a, I have a, a C structure here, calling, uh, which have a pointer, uh, function pointer, socket. And uh, here is very interesting in the name, NetD Client Dispatch. What is it? So I want to see, um, yes, and also it's important that this kind of implementation do exist for connect Cisco and accept. What is NetD Client Dispatch? It's a structure containing like four point function pointers for the free syscall and another function that we won't talk about it. I just put it here as an information. Uh, so let's see. And say like, yeah, I want, but I don't still have my, like, my, uh, my syscall yet. And when I read all the code of Bionic, here what appears to uh, happen to Bionic. As soon as Bionic started to be load, 
there is a function called libc pre init function, which, uh, which um, is flagged with an attribute constructor, which enables this function to be in the init array of bionic, which means that when the bionic is asked to be loaded, the first function to be called is this one. In this function, you have an, a function called net client init. And in this function, it's going to do a DL open another library, a, net, a libnetd client, and by DL open, of course. But, but the question is, what is inside this library? OK, it's quite interesting here, because I'm, quite, I'm, I'm requesting a socket, so I want to do some network. And netd is the native part of uh, the network management in Android. So it's in, oh, it may concern me then. And from this, uh, from this uh, library, he retrieved four functions these four functions over here. So I will uh, keep an eye on the NID client init socket. Uh, call them one by one with the syscall in parameter. The syscall was before initialized in NID dispatcher's C structure. And what are what these functions are doing? Here's the main code. It was a very important hint. what's happening at the beginning of uh, Bionic. It takes a syscall, it says, I will store it locally in my file, the syscall, but I will put my function inside. That would mean at the end of, um, of uh, bionic loading, the, C the net dispatch structure does not have any more the, the, um, the syscall in the structure, but the net client library uh, function. And that was like, what all this matter? What? what are we doing this? I don't understand. So which means that when I'm calling it from my application, you're telling that I'm going to Bionic, then I'm going to this library in D, then I come back to call my to call my uh, to call my Cisco. Seriously? What's that for? What is the need of it? And so I said. OK, you do it very, something very strange, but I don't see the point. OK, let's see later what's going on. And then, so as, as far as the li this uh, libnetd client who is going to call the syscall to create the socket, really, calling, calling the, um, the syscall, uh, I said, the last part I have to check is the kernel. Because I, I, mean, I want to be sure that my creation uh, will be checked at an, 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 a moment or another in my system. So Android kernel have a lot of modification, uh, a lot of mitigation, and the one that's most important here in our matter is this network option called Paranoid. What is Paranoid? It's uh, a small network option that uh, restricts access to some network, network features uh, depending on the GID UID of the process. No, no, that's good. No alarm. <laughs> um, so it depends on the, on the UID and GID of your process. So which means that in your kernel, you have a list of groups that are allowed to do uh, so, some uh, allow, allowed to do some uh, operation on the network level. And this list is defined in an uh, Android 8 editor. As you can see here, we have we are our very interested group ID init here. Which one was the one? That remember that my application want to do a socket. Have do have this GID. So what happened when you're calling your syscall and everything? You're going to you you, you uh, switch to the kernel land, and at the end, as you work to create a socket, you're going to go, going to the code to ifinet, and this is true also for the, for the um, uh, EIPv6 um, uh, part. Uh, at the beginning of the ifinate create function, you're going to check you know, the, user, the user, ID, user ID and the group ID of the um, requesting uh, process. That means, at the end, your application. So the kernel is checking that your application process do have the good group uh, as a second degree group. If it's, if it's good, if it, if it had it, it creates the socket and give back the file descriptor. If it not, it return uh, an error access. So if I sum, I sum up everything we just said, from the application just asking uh, for a socket 
um, API from the Java library, when, when it switched to the native port in order to call to Bionic. At this point, the Bionic is completely loaded, so Bionic, uh, the structure, uh, the structure net D client dispatch is pointing on the on the function of this library. They are called to create at the end, so the sockets coming back to um, uh, uh, the Cisco, then they come back to Bionic, calling the Cisco, switch to the kernel land, call the Cisco, and then yeah, creating the sockets. And the check is here. The check of your permission is here. It's not in, in Java, it's not on the up, uh, upper layer, it's very down on your kernel side. And I say like, okay, cool. I mean, at the end, my, my creation, the, the, even my, I'm, I'm checked, I'm sure, cool. Something is happening in my, in my process. But the thing is, what is the need of this trick? Why do you have to do that? There is something in Android, what we call firemark, um, mechanism uh, is a firewall, sorry, mark mechanism that inside Nady daemon. And this, uh, this feature, this, uh, this small, uh, this firewall marks al allows you when you're creating a connection uh, from your device or to another device to flag your network packets. Um, because if you not, do not do this, you won't be able to, uh, you, your packet will, will be true up by uh, the EP rules, uh, EP tables rules set uh, by uh, set by the by the OS, so on top on top of checking your circuit your circuit the, the, the um, to grant the fact that you're allowed to do a, uh, a socket on Android, also the data are in a way protected by the system uh, by this by this way. Uh, there is some case when uh, when you are when I say system case here is that sometimes also the system inside his in internals is asking to crea create a socket, particular socket and everything to communicate between different services. And in this, and, and, uh, in this case, the, this is the, ser the firework mark server is able also to do some more check about the UID and GID of the concerning um, service. And the only, it, it, it's going to check only uh, the fact that you are a system user to able to, um, to go uh, Further in the in the in the request. So, do we need to worry about this mechanism? We just so we just so. Uh, first of all, I'm not a security developer, so I won't be able to say, "Oh, yeah, the code is uh, there is vuln in the code or and everything." I'm just talking about the arch the archi architecture aspect of the mechanism, because. Uh, I don't have many skills about security and exploit some, uh, some vulnerability and everything. So look into internet permission. Can we break it? First of all, what's very interesting here, remember at the beginning you just said that we, we, when you install an application requesting this permission, if you, do, you don't go at the bottom of, your, of, the, of the page of Google Play um, UI, you don't have any uh, information about that your application is going to, uh, to uh, need the uh, access to in the internet. So in a way, is that the first person to blame is the user. That's the way Android make it. So the first one to be blamed is the user. Oops. After the very central part of this mechanism is, of course, parano paranoid, paranoid option, uh, canal option. Um, when you're doing a ROM uh, for a device or something, never uh, forget to activate this one. Because if you deactivate it, you do the check in the kernel, uh, in the kernel is, not, is not done. Which means, even if you don't have the permission in your application, you're requesting for a socket, you said yes, you're allowed. So definitely, the worst part is this one. So, and the question is, in your device, in your pocket, all the phone, Android phone you have, of course, all your devices do have this, uh, this option in the kernel. So don't worry about your kernel is OK. So as far as we can break the kernel, and uh, as the permission is normal, even if the user is not um, uh, aware of, there is another aspect we need to, uh, to look at. This is rooted devices. When you are rooted devices, OK, you're able to, do, to, do, to, um, to run a uh, root application or system application. And um, and you have normally with these uh, these features a, su a super user application, which means when 
Another application is requesting some more privilege. The su a super user application will alert, alert the, um, the user, said, hey, this application is requested. Some, uh, some privilege that you don't have at the beginning. So again, who is uh, the, the one who uh, have to be blamed is a user. If the, this application is malicious, you have to say no. But even if he said yes, he's allowed to do it. Because it's a system. And when you are a user system or a root user, an Android, is seriously, it's Christmas. You access to all the files you want, to every application you want, so, and you can, of course, create in a socket. Uh, so, if you don't do, not, if your device are not rooted, you have like a normal device, like any normal user, how can you can get this permission? The other, one of the other way to get this permission and to not show it up in, um, and to be sure that your user won't see it in your, uh, in uh, Google Play Store, is to use the share your user ID. If you get to take user ID, this means I will take the same UID of another application installed on the system. If this application B do have the internet permission, that means your application A will have it because it's propagated. Um, you can you can share permission between package. The other question is, okay, so if I can do that, can I do a share user ID on your, uh, with a system user? Yes, you can, but with a but, to be uh, with a, to have the user ID uh, system on your Android device, which means that you have to sign your application with a certificate of your ROM. And for the normal device, you do not have this, this, uh, this, this information. So you will not be able to sign properly your application, and when you try to install it, the packet manager will fail and say, no, you're not allowed to do that. So, uh, but of course, if you're browsing a bit on the internet, there are some binaries, programs uh, that allow you to retrieve this, uh, this information. But you need to be rooted and everything and everything, but you can do it, but at the end, it's, uh, it's a, bit, a bit complicated because you have need to have the hand on the device. What, is, what we're try to do is, how can I access to a socket we have a the hand on the device? I mean, and the only way to do it is by over application. I will take you, uh, will, uh, I did a talk last year about um, uh, Android, per, uh, the Android system in on, uh, Android system, and I show up um, a very bad um, example about the, the use of the Android permission. On this example, what's happening? That's uh, in a, it was I don't remember the name of the guy who find out this uh, this vulnerability, but uh, it's, a guy, it's a guy from Quark's Lab, I think. This guy um, find out there is an applic a system application on Samsung devices which is system, with the system privilege, which uh, have an intent, and this intent is you are able to run a shell command uh, with the user ID system. And this intent wasn't protected at all with any permission, which means that any of application aware of this intent were able to call it with the, with the command to, to execute, and execute whatever you wanted on your device. That kind of application do exist in, uh, in the Play Store, and this is the best way to take the hand on your device with a normal application. So uh, the matter here is who is going to be blamed is the Android developer. Most of the time, you, you have to, uh, to be honest, you don't have the, code, the piece of code of, your, uh, of, the, of the application you are, you're, using, you're using on your device. So all the all user responsibility is on the developer, and you trust the developer. So the question is uh, that everybody should be a, a, an Android uh, application developer. That's a good question. So uh, that's all about uh, Android Socket. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, that will be uh, uh, great to answer. So did you make uh, any application to test for the uh, paranoid um, kernel uh, option for us to test? Because I don't have any any way to check it easily on my kernel f because uh, it's not rooted. So yeah. you, if you want to play with that kind of stuff, you can use a Gini Motion Roam. Excuse me. If you want to check that kind of stuff, you can use uh, you can use Gini Motion yeah. because the kernel is uh, is public. It's on GitHub. 
So if you want to change the kernel of the of the ROM you you are running in under in a, in the ROM, you're able to do it. So if you want to check all the all the case, you can. Uh, if I did, I did a part of it. For example, um, what I did is say that that's for a, for an internet it work. For if you have my root, it work. If I'm user system, it work. I mean, at least if I have my, my, all my um, lure to I think UID one uh, one thousand, it work. Okay. And of course, the list uh, three hundred and uh, four, five, six, and eight, of course. More questions? <coughs>